And big story about Netflix, uh, Ian. Tell us all about it. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, the company estimates that it's uh, around 100 million households around the, the world are using somebody else's Netflix password. Uh, and while they've generally had a, left a little bit of leeway with it, they've started to, to clamp down on it and introduced a system that's been trialing out in South America that they call paid sharing. Um, the short version is that uh, it adds... Um, it gives you the option to add the extra households, but for a monthly fee. The monthly fee is likely to be in the region of around three or four pounds a month. So it's cheaper than a full subscription, but it's still an extra three or four pounds a month. And presumably that will then come with Netflix clamping down on those households that don't have their own uh, Netflix accounts and are sharing the password. So there might be a bit of a clamp down to come uh, in the months that follow that being unrolled uh, in the UK, the US and other uh, countries around the mm -hmm. world. Um, I mean, obviously, they've done their maths in terms of working out that it's going to lose a few customers, but the increase in revenue is going to more than pay for it. I think they're going to lose more than a few. Yeah, uh, especially with the timing. The cost of doing is, is an extra few quid a month going to be a big deal to a lot of people. But yeah, like I say, they would have done the maths. They would have figured it out and seem quite happy that they can take the hit. It seems, it seems like a very strange policy to take. I mean, they've allowed this for such a long time. Is it Ed, a, a case of there's now too many people piggybacking on accounts and, and they've got no choice but to do this? I don't know what the numbers are. Uh, I don't want to incriminate people. Um, I have My account is being used in one other location and I would imagine that that's probably uh, mimicked across almost any other account. Mm. I think when it's starting to be used in multiple locations, that 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 is going to start being a, a bit of a a bit of a bind for them. Um, but equally, you know, you know, having been the great white hope of how we consume media, uh, streaming services are turning it into advert infused, high uh, you know, relatively high cost recycled content, dis fragmented platforms. Um, mm. And the idea that we're going to pay for all of them is is fundamentally laughable. So, it, I look, they've got to do something. Um, you know, they have shareholders that they, you know, they they are a company that isn't bankrolled by Amazon or Apple. They don't have their own space program. They do need to do something, and I do empathise with them, but I don't know what the the ramifications and the outcome will be. I think, um, I I think they're going to have to be sensitive about how they do it. if they just do blunt instrument you know we've detected your thing at, at two locations then sod off i don't think that's going to win them win the many friends or influence people we'll see how it goes yeah um but yeah that unfortunately they, they do have to do something i mean let's face it it's a congested market and you want all of the households that are actually consuming the content to be paying for it because i don't think there's any secondary benefit from there's no uh, because there's no advert they're not you know, they're not those adverts aren't being viewed or any sort of fallback from that. Aside from, you know, word of mouth that show X is brilliant. It's not. I don't think they've got any benefit. So they have to do something. Yeah. Uh, Doug, what's your thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, no, exactly the same as it. It sounds completely reasonable to me. Um, I'm probably in the minority. We just sit in the living room and use Netflix. Netflix there, um, but like like Ed was saying, they um, it's it, it it goes by word of mouth, doesn't it? That's that's how Netflix makes its money. People tell each other that this is a great show on Netflix and and create loads of buzz around it, and that that's how how they um kind of get, getting around. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean key. the thing is they do have to be they they they, they could do with a degree of self reflection. I mean I. But I, well, I, you know, I don't watch an enormous amount of television, so I'm not a great example of this. But I don't watch Netflix dramas anymore because I simply have no faith they're going to persist any point more than one or two seasons before arbitrarily ending and being cancelled. I watch a lot of factual items on Netflix and I enjoy a great many of them. But I think they would do better to actually rationalise the content they were producing and stick with stuff and have the faith that, you know, if we look back at some of the great serialised TV shows of the 21st century, they didn't start with enormous viewing figures. They had to yeah. lay the groundwork and then absolutely start flying. You do not have massive hits from, you know, from a couple of episodes in. So they, they would do as well whilst they're doing, you know... Uh, 
accountancy stuff with multiple accounts they would they would also do well with a root and branch revision of how they're making content as well and stop the thing is how, cash. how do they police this i don't know because if, if they're going to do it on the basics of an ip address well i'm with a provider where my ip changes every time i log in um you know i don't have a static ip address um lots of people use vpns um just for safety and security not to get around things, but just for safety and security. And how are they going to police that? I, I don't see how they can they can do this um, in the way that they're talking about. Uh, and, and, you know, I can see where some people um, will be very annoyed with this because maybe they do have four or five relatives all using the same account and it makes sense from, from their point of view. And, and obviously it doesn't make sense from Netflix point of view because it's lost revenue. But has to be a happy medium somewhere there has to be something uh, and the lower tier although it is cheaper you, you're then forced with adverts and mm. people don't want that either so i think that the thing is they're, they're they're negotiating from a hand that isn't as strong as i think they think it is mm -hmm. i've constantly said on podcasts that it's always the streaming service that's on the bubble for me uh because yeah i use it proportionally the least of well i don't use amazon a great deal but my calculation for amazon is different because of the prime thing yeah um yeah. but i mean i regard disney slash star as a no-brainer and then amazon ingratiates itself because they send boxes to my house at the same time um apple i do regard as good value i mean it if is. you look at apple's content generation where they produce a tenth as much as netflix but they stick with it mm -hmm. i and think that's, good that quality. is the way that's the way forward yeah. it really is um yeah, completely good. Um, and and then you've got Disney Plus, which just seems to be nailing it at the minute as well. Not only in terms of content, but in terms of their presentation as well, and um, how they're presenting the, the content and so on. You know, I, th I think that's still great value for money. And again, mm -hmm. you're getting stuff in shorter window time. You know, from theatrical to to being yes. on on the streaming service, and and that's worth paying the subscription. See, Netflix, they they don't have that. You know, they, they do their own original stuff and they'll, they'll do a short cinema window and so on if they think it's Oscar worthy. But um, they don't have the same pool as Disney. You know, they don't have the same studio pool that the Disney have. So, yeah. What's your thoughts, Ian? You, you started this off, but we didn't get your opinion, right? Yeah, no, I mean, you can see why they want to do it. Um, like I say, 100 million households not paying for a service that they're providing. You can see why they might want to get a slice of that pie. I mean, the one thing that's not clear, talk about maybe being a little heavy handed, but there's no Netflix aren't coming out and saying we're going to have 100% clamp down. That was kind of my words in terms of that, you know, obviously they, they're going to introduce it with the purpose of trying to reduce the numbers of people that aren't paying for their service. So I, I think, yeah, we'll have to wait and see exactly how they implement it and whether they are really do strong, take a strong arm approach and whether they do just more try to convince people to, to come over rather than sort of, you know, cutting it's off. A, a combination of or, carrot and stick. Yeah, a little bit. And then, you know, and, and also exactly how they integrated, whether it's, because, you know, when it comes to tracking ISPs, like when I was writing the story, I jumped onto my laptop just to get some screenshots and I instantly got an alert from them saying, uh, you know, is a new device using your Netflix account? Are you sure this is you? So obviously I was able to confirm that, but, you know, there's ways that they can kind of mm. instantly recognize when somebody else is using or some other device is using a Netflix account. So it might be a little more, like Ed says, a bit more carrot and stick, just try and hopefully incentivize people yeah. to kind of sign up rather than just, yeah, having a heavy handed approach. Yeah. Uh, but Razor, I can see why they're doing it. It's a lot of money to be paid. Yeah. Razor, who's watching live. Uh, hello. Good evening. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us live. Uh, he says this uh, will this big push will probably drive people back to peer-to-peer -peer illegal downloading um, side of things. There's only so much people will take in terms of expenditure on these services and, and they'll try and get the content other ways. Well, what's your thoughts out there? If you're listening live, if you're listening a little bit later in the week, maybe add it to the podcast thread uh, or maybe go to the news story um, that Ian put up there and give your thoughts in the discussion there. Um, what are your thoughts about this? Um, are Netflix in the right? Are they in the wrong? What's your feelings in terms of how much a lot of these streaming services are looking for you to pay out on a monthly basis? And is the content worth that expenditure? Um, or will it push people to uh, the old Cody days and Cody boxes and illegally uh, streaming and so on? Um, let's get the conversation going on that one.